So to get us started, I'd like to bring out our Director of Marketing for our Embedded Systems. Please welcome Jamie Smith. Hey, Ray. Hi, Jamie. Good morning, it's great to be here. It's great to have you here. So, your product line is used extensively in building the industrial internet. Can you talk about the technologies and some of the applications that we're working with? Absolutely, Ray. For the past several years, we've been amazed by the advanced control and measurement applications our customers have been designing and deploying. And every year, there's more complex applications, and the complexity just keeps increasing. They're meeting the needs of these applications by interfacing with the physical world through a wide range of sensors and actuators, then running advanced algorithms on both processors and FPGAs, and coordinating these systems with other systems, some very similar to the first systems, and other times to systems that are quite different. And then they all need to be maintained, managed, and synchronized, sometimes over vast distances. These are the systems that are making up the industrial internet of things. There's two areas where our customers are making big leaps forward in machine control and the smart grid. First, we want to talk about smart machines. Airbus has a vision they call a factory of the future, where they're going to use internet of things technologies along with smart machines to change the way they do manufacturing. To learn more about it, let's bring out Bernard Dupree and Sebastian Boria. Morning, Jimmy. Bernard, it's great to see you. Great. Bonjour. Sebastian. Hello. Thanks Bonjour. For, thanks for making the trip. Bernard, can you tell us a little bit about the vision at Airbus for Factory of the Future? Yes, okay, Jimmy. Aeronautic industry has some of the most demanding manufacturing requirements of any industry. Millions of people every year place their trust in Airbus aircraft to safely travel around the world. Aircraft production requires assembly of large heavy components with quality assurance and uh, full traceability all along the processes. But most of these processes are still manually intensive. Factory of the Future is a research project aimed to, to uh, employ emerging technology to uh, address this challenging requirement and to increase quality and productivity to manage industrial challenge and industrial evolution on all programs. Well, that's clearly a very ambitious and challenging vision. How do you plan to execute to achieve it? As you saw in the video, Factory of the Future requires innovative thinking and uh, novel approaches to our production process. We believe cyber physical system and uh, data analytics are key technology elements to bring this vision into reality. Instead of tackling all these elements at once, we have divided our effort in several areas. As you have just seen in the video, some examples like a smart tool, intelligent communication, advanced collaborative robotics, smart inspection, and finally, a mobile manipulator. Every project depicted there has been already launched and is a step closer to reality. Wow, so Sebastian, you're responsible for the team that's building this technology platform for all these systems. Can you talk a little bit about your platform-based approach? Yes, of course. At Airbus, we believe that the platform approach will bring factory of the future into reality. At the moment, when we conceive something, when we are integrating a project, we have issues regarding communication, regarding code reuse. Thus, we define in that a new architecture based on software and hardware could help us to share every algorithm within the whole portfolio of devices we have. So when we speak about algorithm, we speak about image processing, process planning, we speak about neutral formats that we need to exchange in real time. We have performed tests during 18 months, more or less, uh, to target this platform. And I am really happy to tell that first, uh, the, the, the hardware configuration with your devices, and then the lab view design that was, that was performed, especially on the FPGA side, really help us to accelerate our development. Great. Now, you've made some pretty significant progress. Can we take a look at a prototype? Yeah, of course. Um, so here, let me show you some prototype regarding our integration of wearable devices. 
So these are some pretty cool glasses. I think they look great on me. I think they look even better on Ray. Ray, you want to put these on? Sure, I'd love to. Okay, very, very comfortable. Fashionable as well, I must say. You look pretty good. <laughs> That's true, true, very well. So Ray, now you need to, you need to imagine that you, have, you are one of our shop floor guy working on the, for example, center wing box of our new A330. So the main issue we had regarding this was, of course, to bring a center wing box in my luggage with uh, the customs. I think it would have been quite difficult. Yep. That is the reason why I store everything uh, in terms of streaming uh, within the glasses. And then we are able to re-execute everything uh, with the same platform and the same algorithm. As you can see there, we are using advanced image processing techniques in order to track a tool. And then we are able also to modify the process in real time to display that on an operator screen. And then if everything goes OK, there is no issue. We can go to, to, to the next step. But unfortunately, if there is one part of the processes which is failing, we are able to add tasks to the process automat automatically thanks to a behavior unit which is installed in the system. So Bernard, you talked about how your approach for Factor of the Future is all about bringing all these systems together and coordinating and sharing data. How are you going to use that information to improve overall factory efficiency? That's a good question, and it's a critical point. As we mentioned earlier, all these devices and systems that make up factory of the future must be integrated as a cohesive system of systems. In the next phase, we are addressing a handheld smart tool so we can automatically control process and that allow key parameter like uh, drilling condition and assembly torque. By working in the collaborative research and development board with uh, tool company, uh, the integration of some of these smart functions is already off the shelves. And uh, dissemination will be accelerated by the release of uh, an Airbus software development kit, which could be seen as a low-level foundation of any application you will find in our techno store. So now Jamie Sebastian said that he's using the LabVIEW Rio architecture to program this system. I I'm pretty certain there's no compact Rio inside these glasses. Yeah, that's a great observation, Ray. So, you know, if we were there here just a few months ago, we probably would have had to bolt a compact Rio somewhere to Ray to do the processing with those glasses. But when Airbus came and talked to us about their vision of Factor of the Future, smart tools, wearable devices, we thought it was an ideal fit for our new NI system on module. This is the smallest implementation of the Labio Rio architecture to date, and it's really ideal for small package and high volume deployments. And it's using the same architecture so they can move their code and IP over from Compact Rio right into this solution. <laughs> really exciting technology. Airbus was a lead user of this technology, and they've already begun to implement some solutions. Now, Sebastian, I'm really excited about the wearables and the tools, and we've talked about them, and I get really fired up. But I'm also excited about the work you're doing with industrial robotics. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, of course. So um, at the moment, this project is called um, Airbus Standard Robotic Cell, and it is mainly based on the open robot interface we are setting up with you guys. Um, we are working hard in order to be able to push some serial and serial modules within manufacturers, controllers of robots in order to leverage their IP and the behavior units that could be inserted into robots. So we aim to do that with Compact Rio, Linux-based version, of course, because we are able to deploy some stuff we have already there on the COTS side. So in this robotics IP and framework fits right into your overall Airbus technology platform. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's important for us to have the common development platform everywhere, because in that case, we are pretty sure that every IP that we have already developed for the sum or for any other components will be, uh, be able to be executed in real time. Well, I'm really excited about all the great work you're doing. I think you've made some good progress. But I want to hear from Benar. How do you feel about the progress so far? Yes, we could be proud. Uh, while we are still in the early of this initiative, uh, the team has made a significant progress. 
through the platform-based approach, uh, we have been able to accelerate our design process and have seen a 10 time reduction in development time compared to uh, alternative approaches. So, production test or the pre series production test for the first blocks uh, start on October this year. Wow, that's really impressive. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank Thanks for making the trip. We're definitely proud and excited yeah. to be involved in this project. Thanks. Right.